Hi, and welcome to the last day of the Intentions Yoga Challenge. Today is going to be a yin yoga practice just to close everything off. We're going to hold the poses for quite some time. I'm going to time it. I have my phone here. Um, and I invite you to either have a block or a few pillows or both, um, maybe a bolster, whatever props you have nearby. Bring them all. The more, the better. But if you only have a block like me, <laughs> then that's also okay. Um, all right, so we're going to get started with a little bit of breathing first. We're going to start in a cross-legged seat. And the breathing technique that we're going to do today is called Nadi Shodana, which is alternate nostril breathing. Nadis are energy channels in the body, and the aim of this type of breathing is to clear the energy channels. Um, so it's very good for calming the mind, calming the body, reducing levels of anxiety, and so on. But if you have a cold or a fever, do not uh, do this practice. You can skip and go to the yin directly. So how it works is we're going to just relax the left hand on your left knee. And then the right hand, we're going to bring the index finger and the middle finger to the forehead, just as an anchor. And then the pinky is going to just relax. You can either keep it straight or bend it. And we're going to use the ring finger and the thumb to block the nostrils. So index finger and middle finger are between the eyebrows and then the thumb, the right thumb, will block the right nostril. And the ring finger will block the left nostril. So we're going to start by blocking the left nostril completely. And we're going to inhale through the right nostril. So I'll just explain it once and then we'll get into the breath work. So breathing in, right nostril. And then I'm going to block both nostrils, breathing out, left nostril. And then breathing in again, left nostril. Block both, breathe out, right nostril. So we're breathing in to the right, blocking at the top, breathing out from the left, breathing in from the left, and then breathing out from the right again. And that's one cycle. So we're going to do that a few times and just make sure that your inhales and your exhales are the same length. You can count them maybe up to a count of three or up to a count of five if you are comfortable with breathing for longer periods of time. I'm not going to count so that you can really make it your own. All right, so getting ready. Let's place the index finger and the middle finger on the forehead. Block your left nostril. Let's keep the right nostril open for now. Pinky is relaxed. And then let's take a deep breath in through the right nostril. Block both. Breathe out through the left. Breathe in through the left. Block both, breathe out through the right. Breathe in through the right. Block both, breathe out through the left. Breathe in through the left. Block both. Breathe out through the right. All right, let's continue at your own pace in silence for a few cycles. And try to keep your breath soft. We're not forcing the breath. It should be barely audible.
One more cycle. And we end off exhaling from the right nostril. And you can relax your hands on your knees. Keep the eyes closed. Let's breathe normally. And just notice if you feel any subtle differences in your energy, in how you're breathing, feeling. And then you can keep your eyes closed. We're going to roll over into child's pose for our first shape today. So making our way there, knees apart, big toes together. You can always bring a pillow underneath your belly if you want to support the child's pose. And let's relax the forehead down on the mat. And we're going to stay here for four minutes. I'm going to put a timer on so whenever we hear, hear the alarm go off, that will be the end. So make sure you're comfortable in your child's pose. And then once you are, try to resist any urge to move. I will let you know when we're halfway in case you want to adjust anything. Maybe take out the prop from underneath the belly if you have one. And in yin, you always want to make sure that you are feeling some kind of sensation. So some kind of stretch or opening or compression in the body. We never want to go past our edge. We want to go to about 70% of our edge, our maximum, and then use the breath to ride at that edge. And by staying in these shapes longer, so more than two minutes or three minutes, we're able to really target areas deep within the body we're actually targeting the fascia, which is like a film that encloses all of your muscles that ties them all together. If you think of an orange, a quarter of an orange, each little slice of orange is wrapped around this kind of see-through whitish skin. That's kind of what your fascia is. And so... By working deep in the fascia, we're trying to bring it out of a crystallized state and more into a liquid or even gaseous state. And that's why it's important as well to not move abruptly, to just allow time to pass. And the way you can deepen these stretches is really with your breath. So targeting the spaces in the body that feel really tight and imagining that you're sending the breath into those areas.
And we have 10 seconds left here. Sorry, I forgot to let you know halfway. The time went by so quickly. <laughs> Let's take our last three breaths. One more breath here. And then we'll make our way up slowly. You can walk your hands back towards your knees. Counter pose is Japanese style seat. And just sitting on your heels, keeping the eyes closed and allowing any sensation to pass. So using these little moments between each shape to reflect on the shape that we just went through to observe your body and if there are any remaining effects. Now we're going to come into all fours and we're coming into pigeon pose. So quite a deep pigeon pose, maybe trying to get your right shin a little bit more parallel to the short side of the mat than you're used to and then propping up as much as you need. So maybe bringing a block underneath the right hip or a pillow in front of your right shin. And don't be afraid to prop too much in the beginning. And then you can always adjust afterwards. We're going to do, again, four minutes on each side. So starting whenever you're ready, starting now. And making yourself comfortable. And then completely relaxing trying to let go of any tension that you're holding on to around your shoulders and neck. And breathing deeply into the lower belly. And this time I will definitely let you know when we're halfway so that you can readjust. about halfway now so if you would like to readjust maybe to go deeper maybe you're taking a prop away or adding a prop if you want to support yourself a little bit more and then let's go for the second half two more minutes here And keep focusing on where you feel the sensations the most and try to breathe through any discomfort that you might be feeling right now. Remembering discomfort can make the body feel a little bit stressed or panicked and we have the tendency to shorten the breath. So if you can on purpose lengthen and deepen your breath, you're going to send signals to your nervous system that you're calm and everything's fine and your body will calm down and relax more and give you more space. And keep scanning your body, looking for anywhere you might be holding on to tension. Maybe you're gripping with the fingers or the muscles in the face are clenched. 
trying to relax as much as possible. We have 30 more seconds to go. Let's take another five deep, deep breaths here. Last two breaths. And now to slowly come up, use the help of your hands. You can, of course, keep your eyes closed. Let's come into tabletop, maybe extending the right leg back, moving very, very slowly and mindfully. Now as a counter pose, I suggest just staying in tabletop, but if you prefer to sit back on your heels, you can do that once again. So whatever you prefer, this is actually quite nice. Closing the eyes, just observing any after effects of pigeon pose. And then we're going to make our way to the other side. So coming back to all fours if you aren't already, let's bring the left knee close to the left ankle. Bring your left foot quite high, trying to get that left shin a little closer to parallel to the mat without throwing the hips out of whack. So you want to keep your hips squared to the top of the mat. But again, this is yin, so the alignment is not very strict here. Just making sure that you feel a sensation in your left hip. Make sure that you're comfortable, you have lots of props, and then we will go for four minutes, starting now. Hands can be wherever you want. And then start to breathe deeply. Remember, you will have the opportunity to readjust in two minutes. Just try to stay completely still until then. We're about halfway now, so if you want to readjust, maybe remove a prop or keep them. Maybe move your left leg a little bit to go deeper. And two more minutes here. I'm breathing deeply.
30 more seconds here. Five deep, deep breaths. Feeling all the sensations more. Going a little bit deeper. slowly make our way out using the help of the hands once again moving slowly maybe extending the left leg behind you and then coming into all fours Again, taking whatever counter pose you prefer, maybe all fours, maybe child's pose, maybe sitting on the heels like we were previously. Just using this time once again to reflect on the previous shape. Slowly, we will make our way up to a seat and we will separate the legs wide apart. Now you can place the prop underneath the sit bones to give you a little bit more elevation. You can place them in front of you. If you have many pillows, you can stack them up. Um, first, we're going to fold over the right leg. So instead of placing the props in front of you, place them over your right leg first. I will turn around just so that you can see me better, but please, you stay exactly how you are. All right, so props or no props, four minutes over the right leg, starting now. And here, don't worry about having your toes flexed. They can be completely soft, it's yin, once again, alignment is really not the primary focus here. So even if right and left end up being different on each side, it's completely fine. And here as well, the core is relaxed. Everything is relaxed. And you want to be at 70% of your maximum. So you're feeling a stretch, but it's, it's probably not comfortable, but it's not creating any panic either. You're not going too far. So it's really about dancing on that edge, finding where that edge is. halfway so if you want to change up your arrangement maybe remove a prop maybe make yourself more comfortable feel free to do that now
have about one minute left. Last 30 seconds, five more deep breaths. Slowly, let's make our way up with the help of the hands. The counter will just be to lean back, so bringing the hands behind you and then just leaning back into the hands, maybe even allowing the chin to come into the chest. And you can bend the knees or keep them as they are. All right, and then we'll do the other side. So once again, sitting up right, Extending the legs out to the sides. And then we will turn to face the left leg. Make yourself comfortable. Remember going only down to 70%. And once you're comfortable, I will start the timer now. Four minutes. We're about halfway. If you want to readjust anything, now is the time. One minute left.
last five breaths here. Slowly, let's make our way back up. Oops. And then we'll take our little counter pose, which is maybe just having the knees bent, leaning back into your hands, dropping the chin into the chest. And just using this time to observe the previous shape. Our last seated shape is, you guessed it, folding through the middle. So once again, separating the legs out, you might want to stack up the props here. Um, and let's get comfortable. <laughs> Just make your way in to 70%, remembering you don't have to flex your feet. They can flop out to whichever side. Go until you feel a deep stretch. 70% and then ride that edge. All right, the timer's on, four minutes starting now. And it's better to prop up a little bit too much in the beginning and then you can take them away. Just make sure you feel something. And I will let you know when we're halfway through. We're about halfway, so if you want to remove a prop, you can do so. And let's stay here for another two minutes. Remember to stay with your breath, breathing very deeply in and out of the nose, maybe even engaging ujjayi breath, and focusing on the breath as your anchor. The pain is, a lot of the times, I mean, it is fabricated by the mind. Of course, it is a guide to let us know if we're approaching injury but a lot of the times it's a little bit exaggerated. So try to not listen to your mind too much, but just focus on the breath. And then maybe you'll notice that the pain dissipates. 
or let's call it discomfort. The discomfort dissipates. Or the sensations feel like they're changing, they're moving areas in the body. Let's take five more breaths here. And in your own time, using the help of your hands, let's make our way back up. And then with the help of your hands, let's bring the legs together. Once again, little counter shape. I'm just going to turn around once again. You should still be facing the short side of your mat. You can knock the knees together, lean back, maybe drop chin into the chest. And from here, we're actually going to make our way all the way down to the floor. Maybe keep the props nearby. Staying in constructive rest for a little moment. Next shape, cat pulling its tail. Again, four minutes on each side. So now we're going to stretch the outer hip. The left hand can hold the outer blade of the right foot. Bend your left knee. Right hand reaches for the top of the left foot. Let's pull the left heel towards the right glute and then drop your left knee down and then left leg goes off to the left for a uh, right leg goes off to the left for a twist and let's start four minutes starting now if it's too much to have your left leg straight you can also bend sorry your right leg you can also bend your right knee are halfway two minutes left if you had your knee bent up until now maybe you would like to straighten the right leg and I forgot to mention of course you can have a block underneath your right foot instead of bringing the right foot down to the floor
30 more seconds here, five more deep breaths. Slowly, let's release the legs. Come back through center, constructive rest. Feet are wide apart, knees together. And you can also extend your legs if you prefer. Just a few breaths here, observing the after effects of that shape. And then finally, let's take it on the other side, bending the right knee, holding the top of the right foot with the left hand, and then twisting, left knee goes over to the right, maybe keeping the leg bent or straightening it. Four minutes starting now. about a minute and a half left here. Keep breathing deeply.
slowly you can make your way back through center. And we're going to immediately go into Shavasana. So extending your legs out in front of you, arms alongside the body. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose. And exhale through the mouth, let it go. And one more deep breath in. And exhale to release. And we're going to take Shavasana in complete stillness and complete silence. Using this as our last shape to observe all the after effects of the whole practice that we just did. I invite you to stay here in Shavasana for as long as you have the time for. Please stay here longer if you can. I will leave you here. Thank you so, so much for having participated in this January challenge with me. Thank you so much for showing up here every single day. It means the world to me. Um, last chance today to sign up for the challenge um, for the giveaway of the yoga mat. The link is up here or in the description down below. And if you aren't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I will see you next Monday when I will also announce the winner of the giveaway next Monday. Um, so yeah, have a wonderful week. And once again, thank you.